So today we talk about my new mobile guitar rig or pedal board. I you know, happen to be most of the time in a caravan where I don't have so much space nor loudspeakers or amps and cabinets and um, yeah, I was looking for a mobile setup that was just not too heavy and I actually ended up with a Boss uh, BCB30X pedal board and a GT1000 core DSP and something around it. But um, I'll quickly tell you my, my requirements, I'll show you the requirements I had. So um, yeah, as I said before, it should be single case, lightweight, small, 40 by 40 by 15 centimeters, battery powered, battery runtime at least 4 hours. I wanted to have um, wireless guitar transmitter receiver, wireless headphones, string tuner, metronome, a couple of effects like chorus, compressor, distortion, delay, equalizer, octave, overdrive, reverb, maybe a wah wah, foot switches for the effects, stereo output, audio interface support, media support, no thunderbolt, and um, of course being able to connect to XLR, having a looper with drums and saving tracks, yeah, and this is sort of what, what I was looking for. And as you can see, this is what I came up with. It's um, it's original a three three um, pedal pedal board case, and the GT1000 car happens to be around twice the size of two pedals when you put them next to each other with a patch cable. And the GT1000 car already has a couple of effects. It has some kind of auto wah wah, which is not really my thing, so I will not have a wah wah. And the integrated loop is. A little bit on the weak side is like 38 seconds uh, in, in mono or 90 seconds in stereo and doesn't have any rhythm or drum kit support. The RC5 has that, it has a MIDI connection, so I connected the GT1000 core with a 3.5mm TIS MIDI cable um, to, the, to, to the looper, so um, the BPM from the core is actually honored by the RC5, which is good if you put on drums and then just yeah knows the speed. Um, yeah, current draw of both devices is um, seven and a half watts around, and I can power them via the MyVolts nine volt cable from the black power bank, which is a ten thousand amp twenty watt PD USB C power bank, and the silver power bank is specs wise the same but it can only one device or the other. Um, so, don't know why. I mean, can't really tell, but it is it is what it is. But the thing is, with the uh, black power bank, I can run the whole setup for nearly five hours, and if I run the looper on nine volt batteries, um, I can run the GD1000 core more than six hours. And so with both power banks, I could run the whole thing roughly around 10 hours. The wireless headphones, I used a, a pair of Bang & Olufsen A8. Used headphones on production for a long time, had them lying around somewhere in the box, stuffed away. But they're quite comfortable to, to wear, sound is okay, and they, they are connected to the Rode Wireless Go 2, which um, I use as a wireless headphone monitor instead of a wireless microphone. And I can use... Um, the headphones output, which is a dual-use output of the mains out, so this cable here, if you unplug both mono cables and put in a TRS cable, you can actually uh, use it use it as headphones, and um, latency is okay, it's around 8 to 9 milliseconds, so this is roughly a distance of less than 3 meters, so the same latency you would get if you were standing in a room and the, the amp would be on the other end of the room. So um, then I've thrown, thrown in a couple of connectors and cables, uh, Neutral cables, if you want to go to TS outputs, quarter inch from the XLRs which are connected here. And um, these are the transmitters, wireless transmitters BOSS WL20L. They work fine on my Gibson or Strat, uh, Gibson ES335 or Stratocaster. And um, they should be running for seven hours according to the specs. 
um, they have a USB C, no, a USB a micro USB connector, same as the nine volt battery inside the the loop station. So I have a USB micro USB cable for charging as well. Here on the top you see the USB C cables for charging the road wireless. There's a USB C to USB C cable for charging the power banks. An adapter from A to C. What I else did is um, I put a 90 degree angle angled um, power plug onto the original um, power supply to save some space in the box. And then we have a USB B to USB A cable, the big bulky ones for the printers from 1916, I would say, or 1912. And there's another USB micro USB cable here from the core if you want to plug it to the computer. And then with a set of strings and a pick, this is this is roughly what we have in that box. So if you put this everything together, you can actually get it in there. I have to train a little bit not to squeeze the cables on the sides, but it's doable. And um, this really works well, much better than I thought. Audio quality on the headphones is okay, you just have to dial down the master output to minus 20 dB, otherwise um, the signal gets distorted. And if I use Biodynamic TT880 Pro, the sound is much better, probably because of the impedance. I don't know. And um, yeah, but it's it's doable. So if you want to just play along, don't want to disturb anyone, put the eight headphones on it, they, have, they fit in the box. And um, yeah, some things that are to be improved is, um, yeah, maybe, but currently not doable. Um, all these micro standard and USB cables, A, B, C, D, whatever, it's just a mess. And especially when you go charging the whole stuff, you really have to think how many USB sockets do I have? What can I charge and what, I don't know, what order and so forth. What I do is you can actually plug in the wireless transmitters into each other so you can plug both can charge both um, parts with one charging cable it takes around maybe four hours then I can charge the nine volt batteries via micro USB as well and then I can charge the wireless go via USB-C but one at a time so you need either five sockets or two sockets and you have to char change two or three times but then everything is charged um, yeah, it would be cool if the looper inside the GT1000 core would be bad, just better and uh, would save some space in the box, but it is not there. The sub sub um, output on the sound uh, send return to is a little bit strange because, well not strange, it's limiting. I'm, I'm not really using the second effects loop, but yeah, it is what it is. And um, what else? Yeah. Um, if you don't unplug the transmitters, they just keep on still be powered on and just run empty. So every time you put it back into the box, you have to unplug it, otherwise it will just yeah drain the battery. Um, it would be cool if the RC5 would have a jazz drum kit and not the normal four on the floor. And um, yeah, but this is okay. All in all, quite okay yeah i like that setup not too heavy uh, the latency on the um, road wireless go is roughly eight to nine milliseconds as you can see from the from the recording here and you can also see that the sound is not really as well as the as, as good as the other one the sound floor is much higher you don't have these smooth wave lines but for just playing on your on your own it's i think it's good enough i wouldn't use this as a monitor on stage probably not loud enough but hopefully on stage you have something different or maybe you have a real monitor solution where you can hear the others as well i don't know so um yeah i could i could recommend that i mean i'm using it and um yeah it's quite quite sturdy quite compact though it's only a plastic case it's quite yeah quite sturdy as i said so this is it for today and um yeah happy playing